G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a really juicy question for high schoolers. It goes as follows. Let f of z equal z plus a over z plus b, and g of z equal f of f of z, uh -oh, where a and b are complex numbers. Looks juicy already. Suppose that the absolute value of a is 1, and g of g of z equals z, for all z for which g g of z is defined. Oh gosh, this is, this is juicy. What is the difference between the largest and smallest possible values of the absolute value of b? All right, you heard me take a deep breath there. That's the only possible reaction to this question. Take a deep breath. This does look very, very scary. Um, all right, so there's this stuff about functions. It looks like we've got functions of functions and functions of functions and functions of functions. There's all sorts of composition going on. There is stuff about complex numbers going on as well, but let me just focus on the most complicated, scary stuff, like this g of z, which is a composition of two f's, and g of g of z being z. All right, so slowly, 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 just take it in. f of z is z plus a over z plus b. And g of z is f of f of z. So I take that formula, put as the input, into that function itself. That's going to be complicated. And then it tells me that g of g of z is just the single z again. That is, g, uh, g is f of f, so f of f of f of f of z. f of f of f of f of z equals z. All right. <laughs> That's what the question's telling us for this formula here. And we're told something about A, and we want to find stuff about B. I'll worry about those details later on. I've got to try to make sense of that, I feel like. This is going to be crazy. Um, well, I don't know what to do, other than maybe just try to write this out. F of Z we've got. Uh, what's F of F of Z? I might as well just write it down. It is putting this formula in for its own input. So wherever I see a Z, put that whole formula. So Z plus A over Z plus B plus A over Z plus A over Z plus B plus B. All right. Well, that looks charming, doesn't it? Um, ugh. I don't think I want to do F of F of F of Z. It's going to be horrible. All right. So I'm stuck here. This feels like horrible hard work ahead of me. So let me employ strategy number nine. Yeah, I think I want to do this. It's all going to be horrible. Let's do strategy number nine, which is avoid hard work. How can I avoid hard work? I keep looking at this. There's no way I want to do compositions of compositions of compositions of compositions. But what I could do, this is meant to be true for all values of z. What's the easy, easiest value of z I could work with? Zero. Let's just try doing this for z equals zero. So z equals zero. f of zero. Is that easy? Uh, yeah, it's just a over b. Not too bad. f of f of zero would be put in a over b for z into this formula. So it's a over b plus a over a over b plus b. Uh, let me multiply through by b. That's a plus a b over a plus b squared. All right, not charming, but not too horrible. Should I do the third one? Yeah, why not? f of f of f of 0. We put that in for the input. So it would be a plus a b over a plus b squared plus a, or over a plus a b over a plus b squared plus b, and ugh, now it's looking pretty horrible. I don't think I want to work with that. All right, all right. Putting 0 is pretty clever. That's one way to get rid of some work. At least I've got, at least I've got past to the third composition. Can I avoid hard work in another clever way? Actually, I can. What if I made that part equal to zero? What if I chose a value of z whose output, such as f of z, was zero? In fact, oh yeah, put z equals negative a. Then the whole f of z would be zero. So this would say f of f of f of f of negative a would have to equal negative a. That part is zero. That part is f of zero, which I've already worked out. This part is f of f of zero, which I've already worked out. And this part is f of f of f of zero, which I've actually just worked out. So this, aha, this equation equals negative a. All right, all right. It looks ghastly, but I now feel there's hope. There's an actual formula that relates a and b. I could probably do some algebra on that, probably like uh, multiply through by a plus b squared on this right hand side. Maybe I can make this look much simpler. All right, now, I've lost sight of what's the question. What was the actual question? Uh, suppose the absolute value of a is 1, and find the biggest and smallest values of the absolute value of b. 
All right, let's think about that. So there is some equation. I'll probably get a formula for b in terms of a. And what do I know about a? It's a complex number of absolute value of 1. So it must be a complex number sitting on the circle of radius 1. OK, I bet if I know that a is on some circle, and I've got some, b is some formula of a, maybe it's just double a or something, in which case 2b would be on a circle of radius 2. I feel there might be hope in getting some sense of what the absolute value of b looks like. All right. Might not be too cheery, but it feels like it's doable. So play with it. Can you actually get some meaningful formula out from this mess right now, make it look simpler, and answer the question? So try it out. I invite you to try it out. And when you've got an answer, or if you're close to getting an answer and want to find the answer that I did, have a look at the essay that goes with this video. So actually, actually is kind of cool. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.